Oh, hey. I'm sorry. Uh, let me X out of this. Okay. Sorry about that. Hey, what's up? This is Robert McDougal with McDougal Insurance uh, right here in Norman. And uh, what I guess I wanted to talk to you about, I didn't even know you were there, but is about homeowner's insurance and exactly what is in your typical replacement policy via homeowner's insurance, okay? So I'm not gonna get like real in dark on the details, but a real in deep on the details, but I am going to go over some basic stuff that maybe will make sense to you once you hear slash see it, and maybe it won't because I don't do a good job of portraying it, but we will find out. Hey everyone again, it's Robert, and uh, what we're gonna go over is what is in your basic replacement cost uh, homeowner's policy. So when it comes to the setup, if you went from basically A, B, C, D, E, and F, and maybe further down the line, we're gonna stick to that, but basically if you went down that alphabetical order, each one of those letters represents a certain part of your home that is being covered uh, or contents or situation or w whatever the case may be. And I'm gonna explain that, okay? So I understand that insurance is not the funnest topic in the world, but when people get a auto loan and they buy a car or they get a home loan and they buy a home, they're required to have insurance. Now, obviously, it's a good idea to have insurance if you want to protect your assets, right? Uh, legally, on the car side, you have to have it, and a mortgage company's not going to fork over their money for your house if you don't get it uh, in regards to the home. When you look at a homeowner's policy, and let's assume it's a replacement policy, which means they're not going to consider depreciation in the event of a loss. Okay, so you've got replacement costs, which is good. You've got actual cost value, which is actual cost value. You just have to know what it is. And you can't think that it's a uh, replacement cost policy because an actual cash value policy is not. An actual cash, val actual cash value policy will take into consideration depreciation. Okay, so what I'm going to talk to you about is a replacement policy where Let's say something happened to your home, it burned down, tornado took it away, God forbid any of that stuff happens, but let's say it was a total loss. The company's gonna give you what you're insured for on your dwelling minus your deductible, okay? And that's just as far as your house goes, right? So with replacement costs, they don't take into consideration depreciation. It's basically the number you see is the number you should get in the event of a total loss. Uh, but anyway, having said that, we're gonna go over coverage A. Coverage A is your dwelling replacement cost coverage. So let's for easy math just say that your, your dwelling, which is your home, is covered at 200,000. Now, what we do here is we typically look at the square footage of the home, uh, the age of the home, the make, like the exterior and things like that of the home, and we kind of go from there in regards to how to cover it as far as a replacement cost policy. So what I like to do is go about $100 a square foot or even over that. Uh, that's where we're at kind of in the market here in Oklahoma. and. Um, you know, it just, it really depends on what type of house it is, uh, to what extent it is or isn't. But having said that, um, the dwelling replacement cost, let's say it's 200,000. So what that means is that in the event you lost your whole home, it was insured for 200,000. They're going to take out whatever your deductible is and they're going to cut you a check. Or they should cut you a check for whatever the whatever's left 
Okay, so let's say your deductible is five grand. They cut you a check for 195,000 to rebuild your dwelling, right? So that's part A. Part A is your dwelling. Coverage B is what we would call separate structures. So this is all situational. I mean, people have things like separate structures and then some people don't. Some people have big barns. Some people just have like a, a dog a dog barn or whatever uh, and that's fine but what it is is your separate structures is by default 10 percent of your dwelling so if we're using the example of two hundred thousand for your dwelling which is coverage for your home then 10 percent of that's going to be twenty thousand would be uh, giving you coverage for separate structures and that's anything structure wise on your property that's not attached to the roof line. So that's where you get coverage B. So coverage A, dwelling, coverage B, separate structures. Coverage C is your personal property, it's your contents. So the way I, I explain this to people is if you took your home and you shook it upside down, and even if you got a shed and you've got stuff in there like, you know, some tools and whatever may be in the shed you know to a certain extent shake that thing upside down too all that stuff that falls out is your contents right so you want a good number for that and a good number for that is anywhere from 60 to 75 percent of your dwelling that would be there to replace your contents in the event that you lost them all okay so that's coverage C. Coverage D is called loss of use. And what that means is in the event that you are not able to live in your home, then the insurance company is going to give you X amount of dollars for X amount of time to live elsewhere while your home is being rebuilt. Here's an important note. Some companies only offer 12 months loss of use. In other words, they would give you X amount of dollars for up to 12 months to live elsewhere. After that, you're on your own, okay? Other companies, some other companies will give 24 months of loss of use, which also gives you much more uh, money because it's not one year, it's two. And that's beneficial in the wild event that we have an F5 roll through the heart of Moore again, like it did like seven years ago, and then, what, 20, 21 years ago. So, um, you know, it's, this is the place where tornadoes hit. I mean, they hit everywhere, but uh, I guess what I'm saying is that when I saw what happened in Moore uh, in 2013, I was uh, blown away right? Just like everybody else. What I saw happen was the industry couldn't keep up with the demand. So in that event, in that specific catastrophic event, right? People probably were out of their homes for more than a year. Okay. So in that sense, it's beneficial to have two years versus one and y'all the difference in the cost is minute having that extra coverage so that is coverage d loss of use all right coverage e is going to be your personal liability and that's just your personal life i always hit this when i say personal liability because i'm pointing to myself but personal liability so typically it's like three hundred thousand one hundred thousand is the minimum for personal liability on your home uh, having something like a million bucks doesn't cost very much, at least from my experience, versus 300000 Uh So I would look into that if I'm a homeowner because if something ever happened at your house and someone wanted to bring a lawsuit against you, this money's there to cover you. So it may seem radical and it may be radical, probably will never happen, but if it did, you would be covered adequately or however but that's personal liability that's coverage e coverage f is medical payments to others now this is just the opposite of personal liability basically 
It means if someone were to slip and fall in your home, they don't want to sue you, but they did break their arm and they've got to go to the emergency room and they did incur some bills and maybe they had to meet their deductible or whatever the case may be, uh, you have in, in your policy uh, guest medical or if you have a replacement policy you have guest medical and that's there to help them and also deter anyone from bringing a lawsuit on you. So that's the meat and potatoes of a replacement cost policy. I don't want to get real far into things like earthquake, building ordinance, uh, how jewelry and, gu and guns and things like that are covered via personal property versus other things. Um, so those, that's another video or videos, should I say, but having said that, I just wanted to kind of, uh, go over just the basic replacement policy in regards to a homeowner and you all here in Oklahoma, just so you know, the insurance rates here are high versus other states, but even though we do have high premiums. Uh, we do have a lot of weather, we have a lot of activity. So it makes sense and, um, you know, kind of the way it is. Uh, that's what happens when two F5 tornadoes blow through a certain specific area in, I guess, Moore or Oklahoma City, whatever, however you want to look at it, and uh, within a span of about 20 years or 15 years. So, um, anyway. Like I said, I just wanted to give you some information about that and uh, I hope that that was helpful. I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions, give us a call, uh, shoot me an email, like and subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you as a subscriber and keep bringing you informative stuff in regards to inf or insurance. E and I know insurance isn't that fun, but I try to make it as fun as possible. So check out some of my little spoof commercials. but. Anyway, this is Robert McDougall signing off. Y'all stay healthy. Have a wonderful day.